All right, we are live. All right, thank All you. Right. Uh, I got it, Mr. Dumas. Uh, thank you. This uh, a call to order the Service Delivery and Operational Committee. Uh, I'm your chair, uh, Dietrich Leggett, with uh, Director Odell as a member and minus Director Lockett, who uh, had a medical emergency, could not be here. Uh, I call this meeting to order is now 106. And uh, I see that we don't have any items for consideration this month for our, uh, uh, our, our consent items for a committee. So we will move forward with the reports of uh, committee. Do you have anything for me, Mr. Dumas? Yes, sir. I'd like to thank you, Chairman Leggett, uh, Director uh, Odell, and also to our new CEO, Ms. De Massimo. And our reports, I'd like to uh, present, uh, share a screen and give you a presentation as we give you an update on our ridership. Uh, we'll cover, we'll go over our ridership update, on-time performance, uh, modes of service as far as our shortages and updates and concerns that we have. We'll also touch bases on our paratransit service with our um, CRC contracted services as well. So as we begin, next slide, our fixed route services, uh, ridership for our fixed route services is up. Well, it's actually down compared to January of last year. Um, it, no, I take that back. It is up this month, January, compared to January of 2021. But the numbers are down slightly from December a month ago. And I'll go into that in a little more detail as we go along. The paratransit service is the same. It is down from last month as well. It is, it is down from uh, a year ago in January as well. Our marine services continue to rise, however. There's still events that are ongoing. And so the ferry service is always uh, higher each month compared to this time last year, because this time last year, we were still coming out of the COVID crisis um, we recently faced that again, but the marine numbers are still looking good. Next slide. Our on-time performance for our fixed route service is slightly down this month compared to last month. The paratransit service on time is also down compared to last month this time. And the marine service really doesn't have an on-time performance. Uh, their, their service is running regularly. There are some challenges, we'll go into that later, but the services are running as a court as, uh, based on the time that we're advertising uh, ferry services month, seven days a week. So we're doing good there. Next slide. Here's where we have talking points and staffing shortage. So with fixed route, paratransit and marine, we're facing a uh, shortage on all end. And the shortage is, has a lot to do with the, on, with the uh, on-time performance and the ridership. And give you a couple of examples for our fixed route service. We're currently budgeted for 109 bus operators, full-time operators, and we have 89. That includes a class that we've just added to this, a class of five new operators. Our, we also have budgeted for 10 part-time drivers and we only have uh, four available now. And so we're short six on the part-time or fixed time, full-time of uh, fixed route operators. Fair transit, we are budgeted for 42 currently. And out of the 42, we have 20 uh, that are available. And out of that 20, these are all full-time, so we don't have any part-time for paratransit. But out of that 20, uh, we have an average call-out of both fixed route and para. But for para, we have an average of four call-outs per day. I failed to mention that we have about 10 call-outs per day for the fixed route. So even though we're short, we're also facing the call-outs. And these call-outs have contributed mainly to, or mostly to, the recent uprise with the COVID virus. We have some normal call-outs for, for workers' comp, 
or you know just regular unapproved time off. But the biggest challenge has been COVID. Um, we've been we've had multiple employees who are out. We've had as many as fourteen callouts in one day at one point. So we still face challenges. The good news is that we're hearing that we're around in the corner, not so much within our agency, but with the virus itself. So if we keep trending in, in that direction, the goal will be that if we trend in the right direction and can get move away from the virus, we can increase the capacity limits on our buses. So there too, it help, has a lot to do with the on-time performance and the number of ridership because we're limited to how many passengers we're allowing to get on both para and fixed route. Um, so those are the challenges on those end. Marine services, we're also short there. We're currently needing a director. Uh, we have a short of full-time captain. We have certain deckhands that we're limited on our deckhands. Um, so overall, the ferry services is, is short on the number of employees that they need to keep the service running smoothly. They're working very hard over there and nevertheless that they're still providing the service. It requires many of the drivers who are volunteered to do extra work. And because of that, we're able to continue to provide the service that we're advertising. Um, again, the goal there is that um, if we get our staffing up to par, we're advertising every day, we have interviews, in fact, the um, us interim director just conducted a couple of interviews this week um, to hire deckhands, and he will be conducting interviews to, for captains and other positions as well. When those positions are filled, then we hope to see a positive change in the turnaround on the performance um, for all of our modes of services. Uh, next slide, please. So, with the paratransit, which has been one of our greatest challenges, uh, again, with not having the enough employees currently, so we've supplemented the service with um, CRC. And I wanna share some information with you all about that. So when, when we have their services on hand, it's great because they're able to alleviate and give us some relief on the number of passengers or requests that we have. So one thing that is not stopped is the amount of clients or customers or individuals who are requesting paratransit service throughout the county. And we're not able to turn down anyone unless they don't meet the criteria, but that list continues to grow. So therefore, there was, that's why our challenges are. When we outsourced the CRC in the month of January, they were able to help uh, actual trips, uh, which, which are passengers, and move 318 passengers for the month of January. With that number, um, it, it, you know, it averaged about two to three passengers per hour. Uh, doesn't sound like a lot of passengers, but when you're short, that's a tremendous help. So they're helping us. The problem there though, is that they're able to help us Monday through Thursday only at this time, because they too are faced with challenges. They are faced with the same problems that we have, staffing shortages, uh, the virus. And so when, when we hope to have, to have had many of their drivers, their challenge would only given us limited drivers. An example, uh, they started out with uh, promising us four drivers. That was, um, that's now down to two uh, full-time and one part-time that help us. On Fridays, they don't have anyone available to help us. Um, but we also are doing a quality service check with the service that we are providing. So our department, our call center, our eligibility department contacted the customers for the quality of service that they received from CRC for the month of January. And 35 customers were contacted for the survey and 26 confirmed customers is, were satisfied with the overall service. Three were un, uh, un unreachable and so we could not leave messages so we didn't get a response from them. Four of them stated that the operators were late for some trips and two did not realize uh, that we were using CRC at the beginning of January. But overall, the performance is, has been good. 
the on-time performance for CRC has been great. They're up like 93% on time as far as helping us. So that's not been a problem. Again, uh, we expected CRC to provide four full-time operators to assist with paratrips Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And looking to schedule about 20 trips per day. That's that's our goal right now. We've not got to 20 per day, but that's what we hope to reach. Um, that would give us a total of about 80 trips per day and 400 trips each week. Uh, CRC has provided three of the operators, two full-time and one part-time, and currently one of the full-time operators not is out until further notice. So they, again, they're, they're having some of the same struggles that we're having. Uh, they provide service on, uh, on Friday. They don't provide service on Friday. And Monday through Wednesday, we have two of those operators. And on Thursday, we have only one operator available. So we still face some challenges, but we are grateful nevertheless, because any help that we got is certainly better than not having any help at all at this time. And I just had something pop up on my screen. So excuse me, delete that. All right. So um, that's the uh, report that I have to give at this time. And I'll pause in case you have any questions before we move further. OK, um, if we have no questions, then we'll move on to our next item, which is recommendation from the committee. Uh, okay. So we'll pause here. If there's any uh, recommendations you all like to give to, to me, as far as presentation that you'd like to see during the committee, um, since we're doing a new structure now. I don't have anything, Mr. Dumas. Okay. Uh, well, we'll move on to the next item, old business and new business. And Kat does not have any old or new business at this time, but more information will be uh, shared during the upcoming governance meeting. Okay, well, if we don't have anything else, um, Mr. Massimo, do you want to say anything, Ben? This is your first committee meeting. Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, thank you so much, Director Leggett. I actually participated in one committee meeting uh, just prior to this one, and I'll share some of the same thoughts at this one. Um, so we've hit the ground running, um, and we are um, actively and deeply in, in the process of evaluating our current organizational structure um, and keeping in mind the committees that you all have formed and how um, any future reorganization will be matched to those committees so that we continue the, the, the good work that you're going to be doing in each of these committees and supporting um, our overall uh, business and objectives and so forth. Um, we also, particular to this one, um, have reached out to Chris Tomlinson with the ATL in Atlanta. Of course, they run CERTA, Greta, and the ATL. And there are a couple of staff members up there in particular with um, extensive uh, bus operations um, and EV operations experience um, that are going to be doing a peer visit with us next month um, to uh, look at some of the things that they've been doing and some of the things that we're doing and um, hopefully offer um, us some insights and opportunities for um, improvement. Um, so we are um, pleased about that collaboration with another state partner. And um, I was trying to think what else. There, there's so many, we've got so many things going on. One of the things I'm going to be doing is every, at the end of every week on Fridays, I'm going to be sending the board, the full board, of what I'm going to call a weekly snapshot just because there's so many activities that we have started up this week and have ongoing. Um, I wanna be sure that um, we're keeping you all informed on a regular basis. So on Fridays, I'm gonna send you a, a weekly snapshot of what's gone on that week and what'll be coming up for the week after. So um, hopefully all that uh, communication is, is helpful in terms of um, building um, 
the committees and the board, the director's confidence um, in the direction that we're moving. And I'm glad to answer any questions if you already have any questions for me. I don't have any questions, but I just want to tell you thank you for making yourself available when we were in uh, Atlanta for Chatham Day. And uh, as I reported to you earlier, I think that we have uh, come up with a, a good opportunity dealing with, uh, with Pooler and their leadership. And I think it's going to be a, a, a good outcome at the end of this uh, election cycle. They have confirmed that they are doing a referendum. Um, so we are, um, I'm working with our uh, representation with Mr. Vacker um, and others to um, ensure that we understand exactly, for example, the work, the language wording of the ballot measure. And um, we've got something on timing, but understanding who's going to be leading a information education kind of effort on that um, initiative there and so forth. So um, we'll be keeping you um, informed about that as it develops. Yeah, thank you, Tabitha. Do you have anything? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, uh, we thank you, Mr. Dumas, for your report. Uh, we look forward to our next meeting. And um, if there's nothing else for any, anyone has to say, then I adjourn this meeting at uh, 122. All right, thank you, Dr. Leggett. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank right, you. You too.